Hello students, in this video we'll discuss invariant subspaces of operators and use that to motivate our definition of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Let's let T be a linear operator from a vector space V to a vector space V. So this is a linear operator from V into itself. Okay, here of course V is a vector space. All right, we say that U is an invariant subspace corresponding to T if T of U is contained in U, okay? So there's always two trivial examples of invariant subspaces. So here's a simple proposition, proposition. Both the image or the range of T and the kernel of T are invariant subspaces. Corresponding to T. I'll just spread to T. Of course, the proof is straightforward. Proof if V is in the kernel of T, then T V is equal to zero. And so T maps this element V to zero, but zero is always in the kernel of t. And so that says that t takes the kernel of t into the kernel of t. In particular, it just takes it straight to zero. And then likewise, if we let w be in the image of t, then there exists v in v such that T of W, T of V is equal to W, T of V is equal to W. But now what is this? So W is in the image, right? So there has to be a V over here that satisfies this relationship over here. Now the question becomes is, is it true that this W, that T of W is in the image? Well, what's T of W? Then T of W, right? So I need to show that T of W is also in the image. Then T of W is T of T of V, and therefore that shows that T of W is actually still in the image, right? So this is still in the image, image of T because it comes from T of V, right? And so we have these two subspaces, the image and the kernel. The question becomes is it's possible though that these things could be just the zero subspace or the whole space themselves. So as a remark, remark, This could be these subspaces could be either empty or all of V. Okay? So if I want to find a proper invariant subspace, a non trivial invariant subspace, we can start with the simplest case. So, what's the simplest case to consider? If it exists, of course, it's actually a deep result to prove that invariant subspaces exist. It's a result of pair and flow that these things do exist and so under some very mild, under some regular conditions on a bonic space. Okay, so it's the simplest invariant subspace question. Well, we'll focus on the one dimensional invariant subspace, the 1D invariant subspace problem. So if I want the one-dimensional invariant subspace problem, I want to know if I consider, if I look at the span 
of a single vector v, like that. I'd like to know the question, does t take the span of v into the span of v? That is the one-dimensional invariant subspace problem. So what does this mean over here? This, I can check this condition. This exactly means that what? This exactly means that t applied to v is some multiple lambda of v, right? Where v is a non-zero vector over here. So we have to specify that v is non-zero. Otherwise, it's a trivial problem. And so this is called the eigenvalue problem. Okay, so over here, lambda is the eigenvalue, and v is called the eigenvector, right? So we have eigenvalues and eigenvectors over here. And of course, what is this condition equivalent to? This eigenvalue problem is exactly equivalent to what? Is exactly equivalent to the condition that t minus lambda identity is not invertible, right? So in further videos, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on simple cases. So we can, we're now at a juncture. What we can either do is we can consider this problem an abstraction on infinite dimensional vector spaces, and we get into things about, into this study of functional analysis. Or we can divert and go into the study of finite dimensional spaces, like Euclidean space, and we can try to solve this problem on Euclidean space by using determinants and things like that. And so when we go on to Euclidean space, we can focus in on determinants and figuring out when this thing is not invertible, and then solving the corresponding characteristic equation. Or we can get some really, really interesting things in functional analysis, which we will discuss in further videos. Thank you very much.